So this is the new all-in-one 48 volt system by Renogy. And it's very small and lightweight, but it has a 3,500 watt inverter, and you can connect 4,400 watts of solar panels to it. And it has a 40 amp, 48 volt charger, and it has safety certification and a warranty by Renogy. And it looks cool. I love the blue and the black. It matches my car, my garage, all sorts of stuff. I'm wearing a blue shirt right now. And on the bottom, we connect the battery right here, the PV input right here, the AC output over here, and the AC input right here. And you can also monitor and log with the USB, and it has CAN communication. And there's a main circuit breaker for the AC output. And this is for a generator so that you can start it and charge up your batteries. And it has a ground connection when appropriate. And on the top, we have a screen, and it has a very similar screen and button configuration as other all-in-one systems. And I'm pretty sure all of these are made by the same company, but they can vary drastically, especially with the software. I had lots of prototypes sent out to me about two years ago, and the biggest difference between those and like an MPP or a GrowWatt is the software was awful. I had one that was shutting down for no reason. I don't expect that at all with Renogy, but I want to mention that because sometimes the internals look identical to other ones, but they can still work very differently. And everything looks good, but I do not like the battery connections. On an MPP or a grow watt, they are spread more apart and you have more room to work. And both battery conductors have to go through this small hole. And let's just take a second to compare this to the grow watt that has a smaller AC output, but it has much larger holes to put conductors. Or maybe it will make it look more organized. I'm not sure. Tomorrow when I install it, we will find out. Now we can install it, but before we do, I want to see what the idle consumption is of the Grow Watt. Because this Grow Watt is the number one competitor to this unit. And the idle consumption is 0.5 amps, which is actually pretty impressive. 0.58, and we're at 50.4 volts. So the idle consumption of the new grow watt is 29.2 watts, which is a lot less than I was anticipating. That's pretty good. And keep in mind, this unit is cheaper and has pretty impressive stats. So let's hook up the Renogy and see what we get. And compared to most MPP and grow watts, that's pretty impressive. Usually it's 50 to 60 watts. So it seems like they're slowly fixing the high idle issue. So let's hook up the Renogy and see how well it performs. These terminals feel pretty nice. We have seen some drastic improvements in solar products in the last year or so. No way. And I don't see any mounting holes on the bottom. That's not good. And there's a dimple on the back, but it's blocked by the PCB. And sometimes there's an option for a bracket on these all-in-one systems, but I'm not seeing it with this Renogy. And there's no room for me to really drill in there and put a screw. That's unfortunate actually, I don't like that because this could just swing around on mobile systems. I'm really surprised it didn't come with something. I actually have to drive this trailer in a couple days to pick up some stuff so I might need to take this down because I don't want it shaking all over the place. Especially with live connections to a large battery, that's just dangerous. So it's connected to one conductor, touching the bus bar, and now it's on. I'm going to turn it off, charge up the capacitors one more time. It has the old screen from the older MPPs. Oh, what a bummer. And now it's connected. Now that the battery's connected, let's see what the idle consumption is. Guys, I'm reading 0.7 amps. Yeah, the idle consumption's higher than the grow watt. 0.76 is the average I'm seeing. So 0.76 multiplied by 50.4 which gives us 38 watts, which is an improvement over other older generation MPP and grow watts, but this is just a tiny bit higher than the new grow watts, so that's unfortunate. And this is an older design display. This was what was on the older MPPs and grow watts. I'm kind of bummed that they didn't upgrade this to the newer one. I mean, this does do everything though. And these settings are slightly different than others with this same interface. So let's hook up some solar and some AC power. And even though this input can handle 4,400 watts of solar, you cannot exceed 145 volts open circuit, which means you're gonna have to put some of your panels in parallel with branch connectors. Just keep that in mind if you wanna max out the solar on this thing. So as always, we're gonna test the voltage of this array before we plug it into the all-in-one system. 
and we have 135 volts open circuit so we can safely connect it to this unit. I don't like these connections, man. I'm gonna have to redo them because it doesn't look strong. Yeah, it just doesn't grab the wire that nicely. And the AC out does not have a ground. It only has a live and a neutral. That's strange. This is a very strange unit. I kind of don't like that. Especially if I'm pulling 3,500 watts, I want to have a ground. And I don't want to bond it with the AC input. Oh well, let's just hook it up and see what happens. This thing's quirky. I think I like the grow watt better already. Renogy does have some new exciting products coming out, so we'll just keep testing them until we find something we like. This thing looks cool though. I mean, the cool colors are neat. Everything is finally connected. So now it's finished. We have an ungrouting cable and this thing wants to wiggle around. Um, not that great. And it does have a power saving mode. We should see what the idle consumption is when it's in power saving mode. Oh, it was disabled. Let's see what the power saving mode does. But it's 0.6 amps, which is not that different than if it wasn't in power saving mode. I'll give it a minute to see if it needs to go into power saving mode, but it looks like the same idle consumption, really. I guess it's slightly reduced. It's not going any lower, so 0 0.6 times 50.3, 30 watts. So I guess it's the same as the grow watt now, but yeah, that's the power saving mode. I wonder if the grow watt is in power saving mode too, because these are pretty similar. All right, let's try to charge it with AC power. We've got 40 amps going into the battery, guys. 40 times 51.2, 2,048 watts of charging power. That's pretty impressive for the size of this system, but pretty standard for these all-in-one units. They always have large AC chargers. Uh-oh. Why did it stop charging? It was my solar generator. That AC charger tripped the 2000 watt overcurrent protection on the new AC200P. That's not good. I thought this thing could handle 2000 watts continuous. I guess we were slightly over that. Oh well, let's lower the AC current on that thing. So we can do 35 amps instead of 40 amps. That's good. All right, there we go. Now we are charging again, so it should be able to charge indefinitely at this speed. So we'll come back in an hour and do an inverter output test. So now I'm having a new issue. For the last few hours, it's been charging very slowly and it won't do AC charging. You can see that there's an AC connection and it registers it, but it will not charge. And I've tried different settings. I've tried different voltage parameters for the battery. I've also changed it between utility, SBU, and SOL mode, and I can't get it to charge. And I just had this array connected to the grid watt and the MPP and it worked flawlessly and from the solar array we're only getting 400 watts but we should be getting 800 to a thousand right now the Sun is directly overhead and I checked all the connections on the array so I just do not understand why it's not charging quickly or why the AC charger will not work at all and I've tried every setting on here I even tried the different lithium iron phosphate battery settings the reconnect voltages I can't get it to work but it's been charging for a few hours so we could just turn on the inverter and do a a quick inverter test but I don't know why it's doing this so we're just gonna connect some heat guns and see what it can do so this is using 1540 watts now we're doing 3040 watts but we're getting a fault code battery under voltage alert gosh dang it how am I supposed to test the inverter if it won't charge I've been doing this for a few hours so I'm pretty mad right now you know what I don't like it there's just too many things that are making me angry. This thing is not secured and there's no mounting options. I don't like the terminals. I don't like how close these battery connections are to each other. I don't like how small the hole is either. I don't like how the display is from the older MPP and grow watts. They should have updated this. And if you want to connect 4,400 watt array, you cannot exceed 145 volts open circuit which in my opinion is kind of limiting. All the other ones on the market have 250 volts now. And the Renogy is $200 more than this thing. And it has the mounting holes. It has a communication board if you want to put them in parallel. You have larger battery connection lugs and they're spread apart. You have stronger terminals for the AC and PV input, but this can only output 3000 watts compared to 3500 watts for the Renogy. So yeah, I'm gonna stop testing this thing. I don't like it. I don't like these problems that I'm running into. They're small basic problems problems but I think they should fix these issues and there's not a ground for the AC output if you have 3,500 watts and you're trying to supply a small panel I think you should have a ground even if it's non-current carrying and you're just trying to have a reference voltage to the case I still think there should be a dedicated spot for that there's only one grounding lug and I assume that's for chassis I don't know I just I don't like it I'm sorry guys
unfortunately. And I had high hopes for this thing. I really thought this was going to be amazing. I've actually had some of these problems on some of the older prototypes made by the manufacturer of GrowWatt and MPP. That's why I don't test those. I thought Renogy would have it sorted out and I'm sure they're going to fix this in the next month or so, but yeah, if you guys have better results with this thing, please let me know down below. Or if there's something that you think I'm missing. I checked all of my connections too and the voltage is perfect. So please let me know what you guys think. Anyways, I'm going to end this review. I don't want to test this thing anymore. Thanks for watching the video and I will talk to you soon. Bye.